What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while throw in other whiskey related content. Today we're gonna to be doing a list. I'm gonna be going over five sherry bombs that are kind of under the radar. Stick around. All right, so it's five under the radar sherry bombs today and I'll say this right out the gate. Sherry bombs typically are not my favorite style of whiskey. I do like sherry in whiskey, but usually I like it as an element. I don't like it to dominate the entire experience, but sometimes I do enjoy a good sherry bomb and these are gonna be ones that are a little bit less obvious. Uh, now, as far as timing goes, I'm not sure this is the best time to put out this video as it's late August and it's, it's hot as balls outside. Because for me, and probably a lot of you guys too, whiskey does have a certain like seasonal appeal and it's usually in the colder months, the winter months that we're reaching for the more dramatic flavor profile. Stuff like the big peat, stuff like the big sherry. Uh, but yeah, late August, it is 35 degrees outside currently and uh, I'm giving you a big sherry video. Again, we're not going for the too obvious stuff here. So anything that's too predictable, I did not want to include on the list. So, you know, stuff like the Glen Alki 10 or 12 or 15 or even billy walker's old brand glendronic there's no glendronics here uh man billy billy walker loves sherry i'm convinced that man slips out on his lunch break finds a quiet spot behind a warehouse and just shoots sherry like directly into his veins anyway yeah we're not going for the predictable stuff so no glendronic no glenallahy no glenfarkless no aberlauer no edra dower we're looking for the stuff that's less talked about and less celebrated and there are quite a few out there. I've put five together for this list, but I'm sure you guys will have extras that you can add down below in the comments. Uh, as usual, guys, I've got a mystery pour in my glass here, so make sure you stick around till after the list, and I'll let you know what that is. And let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So we're gonna start things off in an honorable mention, and that will be the Glen Turret 12 year old. Now this is one where I think if you are a non-enthusiast, you might not have heard of this brand, but if you are an enthusiast and if you're a Sherry fan, you probably have heard of this brand. So not quite under the radar, but kind of a little bit. Either way, it's good stuff. Our 12 here is a little bit dirty, a little bit funky. We do have some distillate peeking out from behind the very active casts, but it's still something that I would definitely call a Sherry Bomb. Uh, I would say if you are a fan of other brands like Edra Dower, this isn't quite as extreme as an Edra Dower, but it is a little bit in that direction, and it's a really solid whiskey, so check it out if you're into Big Sherry. Glen Turret 12. All right, so to kick off our proper list, I've got a travel retail exclusive, and that is the Old Pulteney 16-year-old. Now, this is kind of a weird situation because if you look at newer versions of the Old Pulteney 16, it looks like that, but a lot of the older versions and the version that I've got here looks like this. It is, it is a very sherried whiskey. This stuff is waxy, it's rich, it's heavy, it's easily the most sherried Old Pulteney I've ever had. And as a concept, that would have initially been a tough sell for me because I tend to prefer Old Pulteney as more of like a brighter, cleaner, distillate driven whiskey, but they made this one work and it's, it's delicious stuff. If you can still find it, if you can still find the older, darker versions of this stuff, check it out, recommended, great sherry bomb, Old Pulteney 16. So my choice for number four is kind of an odd one because officially it's an IB and uh, you will be able to find it in most markets, but there'll be different versions or different iterations. And I'm talking about Signatory Glenlivet's. Now Glenlivet, even though it's a big commercial behemoth, it's a huge popular brand, I think they have one of the best house styles in the whiskey industry. I absolutely love a well-made Glenlivet and they make excellent sherry bombs, even though they're not known for that, but it's it's true, I, I wouldn't lie to you. And these signatory releases, even though they're not going to be the same across every market, aren't hard to find in most markets, and they're always going to be very big, very full, rich, delicious, and complex sherried whiskeys. Also, since we're talking about signatory, uh, I said I wouldn't put Edra Dower on this list, but I'm a liar, I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, signatory Edra Dowers, much like the Glen Livets, you should be able to find them across a variety of markets. It might not always be the same release, but you can expect a high standard of quality and, and a whole lot of sherry. And yeah, I know this is kind of an odd choice because I'm lumping two very different whiskeys together, but both do get released by Signatory, and those Signatory releases should be some of the most accessible, findable whiskeys from that IB brand. 
And as I said, you can expect a certain level of quality and they're gonna be very sherried. So comes in at number four, Signatory Glenn Livitz, Hedra Dowers. Next up, coming in at number three, I've got the Dalmore Sherry Cast Select. Now, this is the weakest whiskey on this list. It comes in at 43%. It is colored. It is chill filtered. It doesn't have the specs, but it is a gorgeous whiskey. And I know immediately a lot of you are shaking your heads because I did recommend a Dalmore, and I get it. Dalmore as a brand, very frustrating. This release, very good. Keep in mind, this is not the regular Dalmore 12. This is the Sherry Cast Select. They're different. This one is better. Um, it's very rich, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. I think it's got a very decadent sherry flavor to it. And uh, if you can keep an open mind about Dalmore, this is not one to be overlooked. I think it's a gorgeous whiskey. Comes in at number three. Next up at number two, we've got Royal Brocklet 12. Now this is one that I have reviewed before on the channel and I really loved it. I gave it a glowing review. I gave it a score that in retrospect is far too high. I am less enthusiastic about it these days, but Again, I'm just less enthusiastic about sherry and sherry dominated whiskeys on the whole these days. That's beside the point. If you are into sherry bombs, don't overlook this one. It's a good one. This one gives us good specs, 46% non-chill filtered, natural color. It's a full, rich, intense, sherry forward whiskey. I would describe it as more of a modern style of sherry. So, you know, opposite to what you might find in an Edra Dower or a Glen Turret, this is modern sherry but it's good it's well done and it's one that a lot of people just don't talk about worth checking out if you're into your sherry bomb so it comes in at number two royal broccoli 12. all right so coming in at number one we've got uh, mystery pour aside my favorite whiskey on this list it's a beautiful whiskey but it's expensive and if i'm being honest it's too expensive but really good, rich, layered, complex sherry. This one is the Bladnik 14 Oloroso Cast Matured. This stuff is very cast driven, easily enough to call it a sherry bomb. But like your Glen Turrets, like your Edra Dowers, the distillate here is strong enough to stay in the picture. Uh, Bladnik is a very characterful distillate and it works beautifully with the sherry here. As I said, beautiful, layered, complex. Now again, this is too pricey, and I'm not going to recommend that you guys go out and buy this one just because of that price tag. But if you're into big sherry, I would maybe try this at a bar or if you can get your hands on a sample, something like that. It's definitely worth trying, and it is a beautiful whiskey. Comes in at number one, Bladnik 14. All right, so that's it. That's the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, it is all opinion, and I do want to hear from you. You can tell me what you thought of my choices, and you can tell me what you feel I missed out on that I should have included. Finally, if you stuck around to find out what my mystery pour is, this is my favorite whiskey in this video. I like it more than the Bladnug. It's gorgeous stuff. I've got Glen Farkless 185. Now, this is a limited release from a couple years ago. At least here in Taiwan, you still can find it in some shops. Uh, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but as far as I'm concerned, worth every penny, unlike the Bladnick, which I feel is overpriced. So if you guys can find this one, check it out. It's a beautiful whiskey. Glen Farkless 185. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, looking forward to reading your comments down below. Also, if you want to help out the channel, there's the Patreon and the like, comment, subscribe, and blah, blah, blah. We'll see you next time.